Hello everyone, welcome back to Mom and Jess for Men Talk Show. So today with me I have an amazing couple to do justice to the topic we refer to as dealing with unforgiveness, bitterness and resentment in marriage. Hmm, that sounds sensitive but it's worthwhile to discuss about. So sit with me, everyone watching, I hope you'll be blessed by the utterance of the Holy Spirit. I believe that you will do justice to this topic. You are welcome, sir, and to Mom and Jess Talk Show. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> and thank you for having me in your very lovely home. I appreciate this a lot. So please, can you do, um, please introduce yourselves to our viewers before we hit the show? So my my name is uh, Moses Kiliswa. I'm, I'm um, a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ, um, and I'm married to this lovely lady. <laughs> wow. Um, she will say her name so that you can hear her voice as well. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Nancy Kiliswa and uh, I'm also a born again Christian and uh, yeah, we are happy to be here and we hope that you will be blessed by this session. Amen, amen. I trust you all be blessed. So stay tuned. Grab whatever you got there, juice, popcorn, tea, whatever, depending on the weather you're faced with. Let's hit the show. So let's start with you because we believe you are the head of the house. Yes. So we'll try to understand that, um, we want to try to understand basically what unforgiveness is all about and how it is linked to bitterness and resentment, especially in marriages. Okay. Uh, so I believe um, unforgiveness uh, stems from um, many things, of course, but, but, but the core principle behind unforgiveness, I believe, is is some sort of pride that you have in us right. um, and the reason why i'm saying this is uh, as a believer i know that the lord forgave me even before um, i was born all the mistakes all the wrong things i've done he, he forgave me for that mm. so i have no right to hold unforgiveness against someone else Absolutely. if i do that um, then i even without acknowledging it i have some sort of pride in me mm. um, and that's what will um, of course, uh, contributes to unforgiveness and, and the consequences are, are, are terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Men, you would like to support by maybe speaking on bitterness, resentment. Yes. yes, and I, just as he said, so once you hold or you harbor unforgiveness within you, right. then it 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 culminates into bitterness mm. because then you 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 are holding something back and inside of you you become very angry you become sad you, be, you become disappointed and because you don't want to let go you don't want to forgive that person so unforgiveness will lead mm. to bitterness mm. and bitterness also being uh if you don't deal with it then it leads to resentment mm. because then it means that if you're bitter so if you don't forgive you become bitter and if you're bitter over time you start resenting your spouse mm. in, in, a, in a marriage setup. Mm. So you start resenting the other person whom you think has done something wrong to you. And mm. sometimes even the other person doesn't even know. That he's not aware. He's yeah. not aware of what is happening, but you just find yourself being very bitter, resenting mm. them. And with that, you start now uh, uh, separating or creating a wedge between mm. the two of you. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Even yeah. living together there's the cold cold war inside yeah. of the house. Yes. Yeah. And, yes. and in, in most cases the, the person who harbors the, the bitterness is the mm. one that suffers. That's most. true. Um it's uh, and especially if, if it's not spoken out or shared mm. in, in a mature mm. way. Mm -hmm. Um the person who harbors the bitterness or the unforgiveness suffers the most. Mm. Um, yeah, because it's it's within you. Uh, That's true. And, and uh, it's it's not godly. So it's, it's, it's not godly. Yeah, it's it's a sort of a cancer yeah. that hits mm. uh, people in relationships. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. It reminds me of a statement I once came across that when you have about unforgiveness, it's like you're holding yourself hostage. You know, you become a prisoner of yourself mm. until you let go of the person. Because the person will actually be living his or her life, mm. true. but you will be. You know, you can even get palpitations when you come across, you know, that's besides marriage and I might be friends and how much more yeah. it has to do with marriage. So I believe that forgiveness, which is the major foundation, as you have explained to us, that they are linked, all of them, you know, they are all linked to mm -hmm. unforgiveness. So why is it important to forgive? Um, the first 
thing is that it's actually a commandment. Jesus um, asks us that requires us to forgive, right. and, and it's written that it, the, the word must is used. So he says, oh. um, you must forgive. forgive. Um, so from from um, my perspective, it's, it's it's a commandment, just like we relate to the other commandments uh, that maybe not in a in a proper way. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not all those right. forgiveness is, is one of them mm -hmm. uh, so we must forgive um, and um, not only that it's because um, we as people we come together for for relationships and for growth That's for true. friendship That's true. Um, and, and so the only way um, that that can come to pass is 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 by forgiving mm -hmm. um, and, and finding a platform upon which we all move forward remember we are here for for a short season That's um, true. Maybe we are on earth for 100 years. That's a very brief time. <laughs> uh, so we, we need to prepare for, for eternal life. Mm -hmm. um, and so the 20, 25 years that we try to live in bitterness because of someone else um, is, uh, is a very risky thing for us. Mm -hmm. to do. Like it's, a, it's a short period of time that can deny us eternity. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. A short period of time that could deny us eternity. Yes, and just to add on on what he has said, it's 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 all biblical. Even when Christ uh, taught us how to pray, the the, the Lord's prayer says, uh, "Forgive us, as we forgive those who sin against us." So we do not expect to be forgiven if we are not forgiving ourselves. Absolutely. And and also, uh, the Bible also just insists on that part that forgive as you have been forgiven. Mm -hmm. you know? Forgive so that you can be forgiven. Okay. So you, you, it's like he says, it's a command. Mm -hmm. And if we are calling ourselves the children of oh, God, God, then we, we should be like our father. Command, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. And sometimes you know, you you feel like, oh, I don't want to forgive because I was wronged so much. Mm. But then you forget how much more did God forgive us mm -hmm. when? And the Bible says He He loved us. We forgave us while we were still sinners, not right, when we came to Him. Right. Even in that state when we were still sinners, He forgave us. So what makes you not forgive the other person, just based on that? Mm -hmm. And of course now, um, when you, know you, you, you think about it now, uh, like here on earth, if you want to live well with this other, with this person that you're living with all mm -hmm. your life, all this your short life. life you've been given, mm -hmm. how will you live with someone that you're not forgiving? Because we say that if you don't forgive, mm -hmm. you become bitter. You start mm -hmm. resenting that person. Mm -hmm. So your your environment becomes very toxic. That is it, very toxic. Yes. yes. And it affects your mental, yes. your spiritual, you know, it, yes. and then it affects every and and, and we are talking about unforgiveness or and forgiveness in marriage. Mm. You know, if it's outside there you can say, Okay, I'll come home and I'll be fine. But you're living in this home all your life. So mm. if it affects your marriage it will affect your children. Mm -hmm. It will affect all the other areas of wow. your life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's yeah. So it's very important that we forgive mm -hmm. for our own sake so, yeah. and also as obedience to the word of God. The word of God. Yes. Wow. I think viewers, if you caught that, the essence of forgiveness, especially in the home, we want to deny ourselves, you know, of healthy living, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. You know, so many children are affected today mm -hmm. because their parents are living with unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. So we pray that any home that is faced in such a situation, the Spirit of God will visit your home and then forgiveness will be made easy in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So um, are there, I just wanted to ask, are there some uh, mistakes that a spouse will make that might be termed unforgivable? Because you can hear a woman, for instance, who say, eh, I can't forgive him or make statements like, uh, I, I will try to forgive but I will never forget. You know, especially we women, we are very emotional beings, so we tend to hold on to things and then maybe a situation crops up and then, you know, it's, it's, it comes across your memory again, things like that. Yeah. How yeah. could couples handle such situations? So the, I think forgiving someone and, and forgetting um, should be uh, handled separately. Okay. Of course, um, th there's nothing that you cannot forgive. And uh, just to, because from my own experience, I know that Jesus died on the cross for me about maybe 2,000 years ago. I was not born. 
Right. Uh, but he forgave me then, even before I was mm. formed. Uh, and and if you look at uh, the scriptures, there are different um, uh, scenarios or experiences that Jesus had, uh, and 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 he forgave everyone. Um, always. Uh, always. Um, people did wrong, uh, were caught in certain acts, but he still forgave. Um, so so forgiveness um, we ought to forgive in everything we, we forgiving doesn't mean that we forget right. we have to remember what happened uh, as, as a testimony mm. uh, so if, if you forgive and forget then you won't have a testimony to share with someone else to encourage oh, right. you I get so, that. yeah so, mm. so so forgiveness is, is a separate we, we, there's nothing that we cannot forgive mm -hmm. um, it's it's um, it's from a human pers perspective because it there are things that play in our thoughts all the time. It will take time to heal, um, but you have to forgive, then go through the healing process um, and, and keep the memories uh, as a testimony to, to build up others. Wow, I love that. Thing. Yes, and, and, and just to add on that, it's what we need to understand is that forgiveness is it's not a feeling. You don't have to feel like it so that you forgive <laughs> you know it's just a choice that you have to make a choice you have to make i mean be, deliberate about yes, it yes be very intentional be mm. very deliberate as you put it mm. and once you decide now i'm forgiving like he says the process of healing follows right yes right. so the feeling will come later mm. but you have to first make the first choice mm. of saying i will forgive mm. and then the other healing part comes comes later and just to add, I think when you are intentional about it, God actually helps you. Yes. If it's difficult for you. Yeah. Yes. So I pray that marriage is out there, the Lord will help. If you yeah. are willing to forgive, the Lord will help you and give you the strength to forgive in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Just before we move on, just to add on to that, um, it's uh, we will need to look at ourselves. That's right. If you've never done anything um, that needed forgiveness, then mm. you can boastfully say, I won't forgive because mm. I've never been forgiven. <laughs> but if that. you told a lie to your boss or to mm. your neighbor right. or even to your children um, and they forgave you, how forgive. much more? Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. 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 Wow, I love that. Yeah. Okay, and then what, what are the um, no, likely consequences when one is unforgiving? Because we we'll have people that are finding it difficult to you mm. know, forgive. What are the likely consequences in, in such marriages where a partner is, you know, quite unforgiving or struggles with forgiving? I mean, I mean, like we mentioned earlier, the consequences are very clear. When you don't forgive, you become bitter. Mm. When you, you harbor the bitterness, mm. you become resentful. Mm. So you start resenting your spouse. You start not uh, uh, denying him things. You start not being intimate your marriage becomes affected. You are cold to each other. Yourself, you become a very sad person. Mm. And and you it even affects your relationships with other Others. people. Yes. Yeah. And so you you, mm. you you become a very unhealthy person spiritually, mm. mentally. So you are not you you're not the best that you can be that mm. God intended you, you to, be. to be. Yes. So so it's it it just at the end of the day, if you are an unforgiving person, then you are a very sad, bitter, disappointed mm. person. Mm. You you won't be a person people would want to relate to. Wow. Yeah. Because truth be told, there are people you can talk to and after the conversation you feel so drained. Because they are they are they are, they are pouring out their negative yes, energies. They are always yeah. negative. They are mm. always saying things that are not building you up. Mm. And as Christians, we've been called to build each other up, encourage right, each other. Right. So if you meet a bitter person, they'll mm. always be negative. You come mm. out there and you're feeling so drained. Mm. And and the next time you see that person, you just want to avoid them because right. you don't want that negative energy. Right, right. So so those are some of the things, the consequences of being unforgiving. And in a home now, you can imagine if that's out there, in a home, it becomes even worse. Because the wife doesn't want to see the husband, it boils down to you not wanting to see your children. The home is just so toxic and mm. now everyone is just living their own lives and it becomes a very unhealthy um, mm. uh, unhealthy environment. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So you have any Yeah, and um I also think it's um if, if the consequences of of not forgiving is you you actually you isolate yourself. So mm. if you 
uh, have resentment towards someone and you go telling people about about it you know people talk they'll also gather without you and talk about you mm -hmm. uh, and if three or four are in agreement and you are not so you are isolating yourself without knowing that you're isolating yourself directly or indirectly yeah, directly or indirectly wow. um, and so it, it creates it continues to to create a, a gap mm. maybe a gap that started with your, with your spouse yes, it will um, expand into the entire family mm. of people around wow. Yeah. yeah, that might be our portion. <laughs> okay, so moving on, I, we forgot to talk about you know the causative factors because I think viewers should also understand what are the likely causes of unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. I know they could be countless, but could you share with us some of those yeah. factors? You know, uh, in a Christian home, you know, sometimes we, we think that oh, because we are Christian, we are born again, we cannot have bitterness and forgiveness. You know, because most of the time. The, the main things that we know in marriages that cause unforgiveness is like when uh, someone is is uh, is there's infidelity within the right. the marriage right. or so a spouse has cheated on the other one mm -hmm. or maybe big issues like finances you are not agreeing on finances and but there's other little things that we overlook mm -hmm. that actually build Deals up you know mm -hmm. some maybe you're just having a conversation and your spouse promises to do something they don't do or they say uh tomorrow at 2 p.m i will fetch you and we go somewhere then he doesn't do it mm. you know it you you feel bad and then you 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 keep quiet about it then the next time he does something very little it it builds brings, up, it builds up. Mm. and then it's very little small little things that may cause you know you may not think them as sin mm. because they're just normal but gradually if you are not forgiving they pile up they pile up you end up being bitter about them so whenever your spouse does something very little like i know sometimes like in our case, I'm not saying that we, we have bitterness. <laughs> no, but I usually know, I, in, a, in, a, in marriage, yes. you one or two I'm, things. I'm, like, yeah, I'm thinking, the other day I promised to buy her coffee in the morning. In the morning. And then I overslept. <laughs> I remind her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I was yeah. and I'm thinking, where is my coffee? He's already started working and we were supposed to go out for coffee. What happened? You know, so if I'm not a forgiving person, I take that to heart. Mm -hmm. So the next time he promises, Coffee. I wouldn't be expecting Still because it's like you promised the first time you didn't do it, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. Or maybe sometimes, um, uh, like for, for us, we get say emails from school, the two of us, right. and I'll ask him, "Have you responded to that email?" Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, "I will respond." Then I ask the next day, "No, I haven't responded," and I feel like, "Okay, you said you would respond. You haven't." You know, some very minor thing, you know. So I, if if. I create like um, a, an issue out of that, then I start becoming bitter because every time I ask him something, he says he will do and he doesn't do mm. because my expectations are if you say you're going to do it, do it now. Mm. You know, I and know he, women who always yes. want things. Yes. And he he said he I will do it, but he has already set his day is busy. Mm -hmm. He wants to do it at the end Later, of the day. End of the day. Yeah. But I want to ask in the next fifteen minutes and he tells me he has already sent. So when I ask after fifteen minutes and he hasn't sent, then it's an issue. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? So if I don't if I take that to heart, right, then it builds up and builds up and builds up. So it's very little, little things. Thing it's not like it's not about big issues. What, huge uh, like inconveniences but just small small inconveniences that like build up right. so we need to be very careful because i mean the devil is out there and he's Looking looking for these loopholes loopholes to get in so you need to be very conscious mm -hmm. and to know how far you can go mm -hmm. yeah and get rid of that unforgiveness and bitterness as quickly as possible mm -hmm. yes Wow, thank you. I love that take because uh, from you speaking now, I can see the angle of mistrust. Mm -hmm. You know, like you mentioned the issue of uh, coffee, him not being able to get that coffee. Yeah. It leads to failed expectation and then mistrust because next time he promises you, you're not going to put 100% that you will get it. Yes. So somehow we just have to find a way to be intentional about it mm -hmm. and not allow it to affect our trust for each other. And we trust that God will keep helping us. So the last question now is measures, you know, 
marriages and you know couples can take in order to deal with unforgiveness being the major foundation of bitterness and resentment what measures could, could be applied um i think from from our own experience is uh, um having conversations um but but it all stems from developing a habit of talking to god together so praying mm. Mm. if you come together as a couple to be praying about anything at any time um and and you have this unity with, within you as a as a family right um then that, that's a very uh, uh big step mm. towards uh, creating that hedge of protection around you right mm. um and so um prayer being a, a basis of, of a foundation of, of communication um, um, in, in your home, so you come together to talk to God, and then you talk to each other. It's mm. God first, mm. God first, and then and then you talk to each other. Mm. Um, I, I think. Uh, yeah. that's, I think I think that's that's the base that's the basic. Like you you just have to remember the foundation, which is God. Mm. So God at the center of it all. Mm. So if you put God at the center of it all, and you know that whatever that you're not able to handle, you can hand it. Not even whatever you're not able to handle. It's everything. You just hand it over to him. And, and he will Yes. Him. And he will handle it for you. So if you're an, are you are an unforgiving person, mm. just be honest with God. Just mm. tell him your struggles. Yeah, really. I'm genuinely I'm really struggling with mm. this. God please help me. Holy mm. Spirit, help, help me. me. And he will help you. Mm. He will help you. Because mm. I mean, I think that has really worked for me because Sometimes I can be a bit not forgiving, but <laughs> but I thank God that when I actually oh, take it to him and spirit. tell him, please, yeah. I, this one I'm struggling with. Just he will always help. help. He will always he will help. Always help. Yes. And and of course, like he says, talking about it. Like you know, you you just talk about it until you get over it. You know, That's like true. like I will remind him the coffee, remind him the coffee <laughs> until now it becomes it becomes like a, a joke, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are now joking, joking about, about it, it, you know. Yes. So it's now not a big deal. We are not now joking deal. about it, mm -hmm. you know. So you talk about it until you get rid of it. You okay. get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I love yeah. that. I love yeah. that. Well, wow, you are just, yeah, just before you okay. leave, then we also need to not to be defensive. Mm -hmm. um, just, wow, just this be is a easy good one. Yeah, just be okay. easy and, and yeah, because once you start defending yourself uh, against certain accusations or, or whatever is happening, then then that's a problem. Mm. Um, it, 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 it ends up um, developing this form of pride within you, and that's the, the beginning of destruction. That is true. Yeah. So basically, apologizing too yeah. helps. Yes. Even though some yeah. people see it as weakness, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you are easy to apologize easily, it looks like you are condoning bad behavior or things that are not right. Yeah. yeah. But but I think it's it's very important because when you apologize, the person who feels aggrieved mm. knows that you actually accepted mm. you did and something wrong. Yes, mm. and it softens the heart, like you're saying. Mm. Yeah. Other than when. You, you tell someone you did this and this hurt me and, and they are becoming defensive. Mm. Then you feel like they are not accepting. Yes, that's true. You so know. it starts with accepting and apologizing. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much. We really enjoyed this. Viewers, I'm sure you enjoyed this too. Please drop your take homes. I believe you've liked one or two things from this. We thank you once again for availing yourself for this topic and the Lord bless your home. Viewers, until then, we'll us. see you in next episode. Please remember to subscribe to this channel to keep you in line of subsequent episodes. God bless you. Bye. Bye. God bless <laughs> Thank you. you.